Hey rockers and welcome back to my channel. Are you loving my earrings? Do you see these? So there's a story behind these earrings. I got these from the first person I ever started following on YouTube, which was just a short time ago. Her name is Lady Luck Tutorials and she sells paparazzi jewelry. And these are the gunmetal glitz earrings. Once I have 150 subscribers, I'm going to give away a pair of her glitzy earrings. I have a brand new pair. I think the camera's over there. Will it focus? Uh, these are very cool because they have rhinestones on the outside and the inside. And so these are going to be my giveaway prize for when I have 150 subscribers. Hopefully that'll be soon. So back to Lady Luck. I got off social media platforms last semester, um, maybe October of last year. I was crazy busy. I had two part-time jobs, uh, both at law firms, and I couldn't have a full-time job because I was fulfilling my externship requirement at law school. And I chose to do the public defender's office, and I think every law student should be required to do a stint at the public defender's office. It was the most amazing experience and I'll get into all of that in another video. I learned so much about my community, about the legal community, about the crimes in my community. I had no idea certain things were going on, um, about the legal system itself, so much. I learned also to think defensively and to really think defensively. I thought I thought defensively, I didn't think defensively. That's what the public defender's office taught me. So with all of that going on, plus going to law school classes, um, I gave up on social media for a while. I read a Forbes article that said taking a break from social media is healthy. And I thought, okay, this is the perfect time because when I would come out of court, my phone would blow up. It would vibrate for like 10 minutes straight of all sorts of notifications and work emails too. And what was happening was that my work emails were getting lost in all the social media notifications. So I disabled my accounts for a little while. I could have just turned off the notifications, I learned that later, but I just removed them from my phone completely because I really didn't have the time to be playing on social media anyway. And then come December, law school's over and I've really enjoyed not having the social media platforms on my phone, but I have YouTube on my phone. Now we all know that our phones record everything, right? Like even if we're not recording, they straight up listen to us. My husband and I, our water heater died and we were ta just talking about replacing the water heater and I don't think either of us had our phone in our hand. Kid you not, as soon as we logged in, turned on our phone, bam, advertisements for water heaters. So they listen to everything and sometimes it's totally creepy and terrible and sometimes it's awesome. So I jumped onto YouTube. My husband does YouTube. Uh, he. He's not into anything social media, but he watches a lot of YouTube stuff. So I popped on YouTube, and the first thing that YouTube recommended me to watch was Lady Luck Tutorials. And I think this is because we have so much in common. Uh, I was blonde for many, many years, and she is a gorgeous blonde. Uh, both of us are married, no kids, we both have cats, we love fashion, makeup, jewelry, hair, all this stuff. And so they recommended that I watch her channel, and I did, and it was love at first sight. Um, and that is what drove me into the rest of my social media addiction. So I am sad to report that I did not break my social media platform addiction. I replaced it. I replaced it with YouTube, and it's I'm getting a much better value out of YouTube. So she sells paparazzi jewelry and I bought a couple of pairs of earrings from her because I want to support her and I'll talk more about that in another video. Um, but for my giveaway, once I receive 150 subscribers, I'm going to pick someone randomly and give them a pair of these gorgeous earrings. I'm wearing the gunmetal ones and these are the, the silver colored ones. They're not gunmetal. So... What did I really come on here to talk to you about? I came on to talk to you about my whole 30 day three experience. The book says, the hangover, the alarm rings on day two and you pop out of bed expecting to feel great just like you did yesterday. Instead, you feel hit, headachey, a little sore, foggy, kind of like you're hungover. You're pretty sure you didn't go down a fifth of vodka in your sleep. So what happened? Let's revisit what you were consuming before you started Whole30. Pizza, cookies, beer, or wine, fast food, potato chips, candy, muffins, bagels, bread, so much bread. 
This is when the ghost of your high sugar, high carb, nutrient poor past comes to kick you in the butt and apparently the head. The amount of suck you experience in this phase is directly proportional to the amount of junk you consumed before you began the program. So day two, I didn't feel bad. Towards the end of the night on day two, I had a, a headache, um, but I wasn't super high carb, super high sugar uh, before this diet. I was actually on the ideal protein diet for a couple of years, and I had great success with that. Um, the last semester in law school, the, the one previous to this one, kind of everything went to hell in a handbasket. And uh, I was eating out a lot and ended up consuming a bit of sugar and I put on some of the weight that I had lost. So on ideal protein, I had lost 60 pounds and I put 20 of it back on in one semester, uh, hence the change. And so I'm hoping to lose that, we'll see. Now the thing with the Whole30 diet is that it says we're not allowed to get on a scale until the 30 days are over and this is literally killing me, literally killing me. The scale is right there, it's right behind me, it's on the floor behind me, I wonder if I can show you. It's it's not far, it's, it's in my little room here. See it? There it is. And I so just want to go over and step on it and see what numbers it's flashing because I swear my clothes are already fitting looser already. I'm feeling like I've lost some weight and I'm dying to know what it is and I kind of just I kind of just want to go over there and step on the scale. But the book says I can't, so I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> so I didn't feel terrible on day two. This morning... I was hungover as hell and I didn't I didn't party last night. I didn't drink martinis or mixed tequila drinks that caused me to black out. Nothing like this. No fun at all last night that would cause the hangover today and I felt really hungover today. Today was a five cup of coffee, three Advil kind of a day. So back to the book. Especially if you consumed it consistently, this phase is also approximately 34% harder for the habitual soda drinkers as you are limiting not just a massive, massive amount of sweetness, but the extra caffeine too. Now, I wasn't on soda before this diet. I had kicked that habit with um, Ideal Protein, and so we drink, we drink unsweetened iced tea right now, which my husband calls mop water, and my niece heard my husband calling it mop water, and she was over here a weekend or two ago, and she asked me for mop water. She straight up asked me for mop water. Thanks, thanks, Uncle. So my husband describes unsweetened tea as mop water because this is what he imagines the water in the bucket at the high school for mopping the floors would taste like. Uh, my niece then asked me, how, how would he know that that's what it would taste like? I don't think he's ever tasted it. I know he's never tasted it, but this is what he thinks that the janitor bucket at the school would taste like. It tastes like unsweetened iced tea. Now, I love unsweetened iced tea. My niece loved it. Uh, he calls it mop water. So we've been drinking mop water for years. Nearly all Whole30 report headaches, fatigue, brain fog, and a general malaise during the, this part of the program. Your body is having a hard time adjusting to the new food you're eating and without going to the sugary like food products you used to eat. This process lasts a day for some lucky folks, but others it can last several. several. Relax, drink a lot of water, take it easy at the gym, and keep making good choices. Now would also be a good time to recruit the sympathy and support of friends and family because apparently days four and five, kill all things is coming up. So stay tuned for that video. I will report back as to if I felt like killing all things uh, after day five. So today is day three. I um, have been following the diet basically to the T. I will tell you if you follow the, per the, the shopping plan that they have online, they say it's for one, it's for two. It's, it's more than enough for two because I made the stupid mistake and doubled everything and now I have enough food to feed a family of 10. And I am struggling to get through all the food before it goes bad. We are not lacking food here. I have not been hungry because I have so much stuff made. Um, I would also recommend maybe cut down on the amount of variations. They give you, you know, 30 different meals to make for the week. You don't need 30 different meals because you're gonna have so much in leftovers. I have so much. Um, 
I think maybe this weekend I'm gonna invite some friends over and have a party just to eat the food so that it doesn't spoil. I have gorgeous vegetables sitting in the fridge that I haven't been able to get to because I made enough for 30 people for three days. I will share with you after this video my making of the spaghetti sauce, which was amazing, and the squash. Now you're gonna see the squash that I show you is an acorn squash and not a spaghetti squash. Uh, the recipe, the, the meal plan for the whole week called for me purchasing both and I had no idea which one was which. I did purchase the two right ones, but when I got them home, I didn't know which one was which. And so I I cooked first the acorn squash and when I went to scoop it out and it didn't scoop out like spaghetti, I figured out it wasn't the spaghetti squash. And so the recipe in the book calls for tomato sauce with spaghetti squash noodles. Delicious. Delicious pick the right squash um, and you'll know immediately. So I cooked the spaghetti squash the same way that you're gonna see me cook the acorn squash, which was also delicious, but it was it was nothing like the spaghetti squash. I think I have become quite the fan of spaghetti squash and it'll stay a staple in my diet. As for my no-buy videos, so I have, was trying to figure out my strategy for filming and how am I gonna film everything that I wanna talk to you guys about in the teeny tiny amount of time that I have available that I have free, quote unquote, to do this. And I realized that next week is spring break. Spring break, which means I will get at least five hours of my life back next week just in commuting alone, and I cannot wait. So next week, you will see videos up from me more about my no-buy year and what my rules are and what I'm planning to do and what I'm starting with. I haven't made it through anything, like I haven't killed anything. Um, since I started my no buy, so everything I show you will be what I actually started with and we'll go from there. Now, if you're jonesing for no buy videos, I recommend that you go check out Hannah Louise Poston. I'll have her link down below. She is the whole reason why I'm doing my no buy year. She has the most amazing approach to a no buy year that I've ever seen. She is incredibly thoughtful, strategic, and really takes in every little bit, every little part of everything about the no-buy year, how it affected her emotionally, physically, how it affected her space, how it affected her thought process. I highly, highly recommend that you check her out. I think that you're gonna fall in love with her like I did the minute that you see her in a video. So I hope you enjoy the sauce making video coming up next. Just substitute in a spaghetti squash for the acorn squash that you're gonna see and bon appetit. Okay, so here's what I use to make the sauce. Um, we have a tablespoon of cooking fat, an onion finely chopped, two celery stalks. I used a lot more than two because I bought enough for 50 people. One carrot peeled, I used two carrots. I made a double batch. Uh, two cloves of garlic. I always like triple whatever the garlic requirement is in a recipe. I can't have enough garlic. One can, 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. I did use that amount. A teaspoon of fresh thyme. I didn't measure it, I just kind of dumped in. A teaspoon of fresh oregano. Again, I dumped in, I probably used closer to a tablespoon of both. A bay leaf, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper. I'll link the recipe down below. And so you heat some oil in your pan and let it simmer, shimmer. Uh, the oil should be shimmering when you go to pop in your onion and celery and you cook that for a little while. So this is dropping the oh celery and carrot and onion. You saw the tay this for a little while until things get fragrant and soft. And then you dump in the tomato sauce. Now what this doesn't tell you, and I think my video is going too fast for you to see, I'm pushing this off of the heat because when I dumped in the tomato sauce, it became a volcano. And if you can see, it's ending up on the top of the lid there. It's just spitting like mad. That that went for distance. It, it nearly hit the ceiling, everything. I'm gonna be finding tomato sauce for weeks to come. It covered everything. So take it off the heat add your tomato sauce, then add some Italian seasoning. I added that to just make it a little bit spicier. Um, that was all of the 
spices I put in for the spaghetti squash. This is an acorn squash. I know that now, uh, but <laughs> pretend it's a spaghetti squash. You score the score the rind, cut it open without cutting yourself. That's a challenge. Um, it takes a bit of effort to get these puppies open. And when you open it up, you'll find that there's like a little seed area, almost like a cantaloupe. And so you have to clean that out. Um, which took a bit of time too. People say to use a spoon that didn't work. I couldn't get anything out with very little out with the spoon. You can see it's still stuck in there. I tried my hands that didn't work and so I ended up going in with a knife to clean it out and uh, after it's cleaned out you hit it with salt, pepper, thyme, and oil. Pop it on a baking sheet and put it into the oven for uh, at 425 for about 45 minutes and it will be beautifully baked. That sauce recipe is really delicious. I saw with making this sauce and everything else that you want to do in your life, I hope that you be the change that you want to see and rock on.